Uh, with this video, I'm going to discuss a little bit about how your formatting in your VBA code ought to look. So I'm just going to use a little sample program I typed here, and I'm just going to kind of step through this. There are some things in this program, there's some code in this program that we haven't really discussed yet and you may not be familiar with, but again, I want you to concentrate on the formatting of what we see on the page here. So generally it's a good idea when you start your program to put a little comment up at the top that describes your program and you know has your name in it and maybe a little bit about what the program is supposed to be doing it's quite common in the body of your subroutine to declare your variables at the top you should give your variables a good name the names have to start with a letter basically in my class I start the names with a letter and uh, you obviously want to be thinking about the correct data type. It's not a bad idea to uh, put a comment on the line where you declare your variable that describes maybe how you're going to use that variable. Most variables should have a good enough name to describe the variable clearly. Um, if, if the variable doesn't have a very good name, it really does need a comment. You'll notice also that um, the body of the code inside my subroutine is indented one tab stop you definitely want to do this so this isn't really optional I, I just think it's mandatory if you're going to want to learn how to program you need to learn how to write code that is easy to read and is formatted nicely so use one tab stop here for this first indention now again this is just the first indention you'll notice down here that here's a new statement that most of us haven't used in our program yet this is an if statement for making decisions well the body of this particular if statement you'll notice is indented an additional tab stop so that was a tab, tab, you know, and got me over here. So again, pay attention to your indentions because the indention helps a person read your program. So I've got a couple of dim statements, then I have an input box statement, I have a, another input box statement, and then I have my if statement. Now, when we start using if statements, which we'll do this week, I want you to notice the style of the if statement I'm using here. This is a multi-way if statement because I actually have multiple questions that I ask. First I ask if the number input is greater than zero, and then I ask another question here to see if it's less than zero, and then finally if it's neither greater than zero nor less than zero, the else clause here will execute. So again, the thing to notice here though is that I have an if statement with the then on the end of that line. So essentially you start with the if, you put your test and then you have the then statement and you hit enter. Always hit enter after your then statement. And then you indent. So you indent one more tab stop and type in your statements. It could be one statement, it could be many statements here. Again, if I'm going to have an additional question, I, I'll do an else if. Um, there's my test. And I end it with the then. And I indent the body of that else. One more tab stop. Finally, I don't need to ask another question, so it's sort of the default clause here. If it's not greater than zero, if it's not less than zero, then what else could it be? I don't need another question here. But again, notice under the else statement here, I've indented one additional tab stop. Now again, this is really not optional. If you're going to program and learn how to program properly, you need to learn how to format your program properly. Now, beyond the indention, notice I have a blank line right here. So this blank line provides kind of a separator between my dim statements and my executable statements. Also notice in front of my if statement, I put a blank line. So this allows me to separate, you know, something that's kind of interesting happening here from just my assignment statements. So this blank line right here, again, that's important formatting. And finally, notice down at the very end of my if, so I have my if then at the top, that's where it starts. And down here I have to tell Visual Basic that that's the end of my if statement. So I say end if, and that's of course on a line by itself. But notice how the end and the else and the else and the if all line up nicely in a nice line here. And all the bodies are also lined up an extra tab stop. Again, notice the blank line following my end if. So my if statement and my end if are nicely separated and it's easy to pick out in the program code. Let's go down and just look at another example. Now here's another example of where I'm declaring some more variables down here. Now these variables again, notice they're not very declared up at the top, they're declared here where I'm about ready to use them. 
This is just another approach, and instead of declaring all four variables at the top, I've saved these two for down here, because that's right where I'm going to use these variables. So it's kind of a personal choice on that one. I actually kind of like declaring variables just right before I'm going to use them. Again, notice the blank line here between my dim statements, my declar declaration of my variables, and my executable code. And then notice again another blank line here before I come to the for loop. This is a looping construct. Basically what this piece of code does is it will repeat. It will repeat for a certain number of times. So for instance, if the user inputs a 3 at this input box prompt, it will go from 1 to 3. So that loop goes around 3 times. The counter gets the value 1 to start with. You can think of this as an assignment. It will then execute the body of this statement. It will print counter. It will print the 1 the first time. Then it comes down and it says next counter. And it automatically just increments the counter by 1. And so it comes around and then counter would print 2. And it will say next counter. And then finally counter will come up and print 3. And that's what the value of max is. And then it will exit the for statement. Again, though, a reminder, there's a blank line in front of the for statement, and notice there's a blank line after that for statement. I could have multiple statements inside the body of this, but again, notice the body of that for statement is indented in additional tab stop so that I can see where the for is. It's very easy to find the matching next for that for loop, and any statements that I put inside are indented. So again, these kinds of basic formatting techniques are really very important, and they're not really optional. So please be very thoughtful about when you're typing in your code. Put in blank lines as appropriate to separate sections of your code, make it easier to read. Put in the additional indentions as necessary, and you can always follow, follow my style guidelines from the code that you see. So I really encourage you to... Uh, to do these things. I have no idea if this program runs because I haven't actually checked it for errors, so let's just give it a shot. And it says I have a variable not defined, so let's click OK and see what's going on. So notice right here, that's a very nice example of option explicit. I accidentally put the word num right there instead of num1, so I need to fix that. So let me go ahead and fix that and try running this again. So enter a number, let's go ahead and hit the number 2 and it says enter a string and I'll enter my name for the string. I never used this in the program. And it says 2 is greater than 0. I like numbers greater than 0. Then it should prompt me for a number from 3 to 7. Let me go ahead and put in 4 and OK and watch me count up to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I click OK and the program should end and indeed it did. So that's how that program runs. I encourage you actually to try out this program just for a little preliminary taste of the if statement and the for loop and also to practice your formatting. You can put that up of course in your PBWorks site as, a, as another example of code you've worked on. Thank you.